Well, hello. In this video, we're gonna be building a PC. This is to celebrate a new team member, George. George, George. But he needs a PC to do work on and the forbidden word, game. There is a caveat to this PC build. I wanna use only parts that are on a deal during Black Friday. So if you are thinking about building a PC during the Black Friday, you're gonna learn a lot about different parts, what are on a deal. I'm gonna share some of these deals with you. And if you've paid close attention at this point, you notice that there's something in the shot already that is impossible to buy. We'll get to that in a minute, but it's been a while since we built the PC, so I'm excited. The best bang for buck Black Friday deals PC. Welcome to the channel. Let's go. So what about the parts for this PC then? Well, motherboard is arguably one of the most important things as it's one of the components that links everything together. This motherboard you can't really buy. It's uh, an M80X motherboard, Z890, and that offers quite a lot of really nice features. But the good thing is there are lots of different options of motherboards on a deal. If you want to find them in the video description below, please feel free to check them out. During this Black Friday, whether you're looking for Intel or AMD motherboards, there are some on a deal. I'll leave some of my favorites linked in the video description below. Or you can check out the live stream that we did earlier this week about the best motherboard deals that are on the best price ever. So I'm using this motherboard because it's Z890. It's M80X, it could have been A80X, but it's just something I have in the studio. You just use the parts that are available to you. But bear in mind, you can't find this motherboard in the Western market anywhere. Okay, moving on to the CPU, which is a bit of a controversial one here. You'd think we'd go with AMD, right? Well, this is the Intel Core Ultra 7 265K. This is what I would call the best bang for buck in this season. This is a 20 core CPU, which consists of eight performance cores and 12 efficiency cores. And this is the new Intel architecture that is very power efficient. Easier to cool than last generation. And because it wasn't received well by the gamers, it actually goes for an insane price right now. And Intel is also running a holiday deal, which makes it even better. I'm not sure if this lasts forever, but there's a free 240 mm AIO Intel Holiday Bundle game worth $59 and $50 off as well, which makes this CPU technically overall price worth around $100, which is just bonkers. Check it out in the video description below if you want to enjoy this deal yourself. When it comes to SSDs, there are not that many deals on SSDs during this Black Friday, but I highly recommend checking out Samsung SSDs because Samsung always has them on a deal during the deal season, whether you're looking for Gen 4 or Gen 5. There are some deals out there for the 9100 Pro Gen 5 drive and the 990 Pro Gen 4 drive. I am using the crucial T705 4 terabyte SSD just because I've got many multiple ones of these in the studio and I'll leave a link for that in the description below if you want to check that one out as well. But remember, what you want is a fast drive for your operating system and programs and then another separate drive for your projects, assets and the rest of the things. If you want to check out my storage workflow guide, I'll leave the link for that in the video description below. Now for the cooler. We're using a 360 millimeter AIO from Thermaltake. It's called LA360S ARGB Sync. This is plenty of cooling for our CPU. And right now it's on a deal in the UK for less than 70 quid. But if you're watching this from the US, I'll leave the link in the description below as well. So you can check that one out as well. That is not the only model of AIOs that Thermaltake has on a deal, by the way. They've got absolutely tons. In fact, they've got cases, power supplies, sim racing gear, and many others. There's lots of deals on them on right now, which is absolutely amazing, including the PC case, which we'll use later on in this video. If you want to check out any of their deals, the links of these are in the video description below. But at this price point, to get a screen on your AIO that shows you the temperature of the CPU and other things, it's amazing value. The installation process is also very straightforward. But if you use the link for the CPU in the video description below, then if the stock lasts, you do get a free AIO with it, 
So then you don't actually need the cooling, which just brings the overall price point of this PC even further down. Now, RAM, this is where things get a little bit spicy, as you might have seen or heard. The RAM prices have absolutely skyrocketed, but I'm using 32 gigabytes of Team Group T-Force DDR5, and this is only 5,600 mega transfers per second. And you might be saying, this is too low or slow. Well, actually, for creative professionals, the speed doesn't really matter as much as you think. And this is one of the tips for this Black Friday season that I've got for you. Don't get distracted by the RAM speed. Just get the right capacity and then upgrade the RAM in the future when the prices have gone down. If you want to check out any of the deals that I have found, I'm going to leave some in the video description below as well. Now, the PC case that we're using is Thermaltake View 270 Plus WSA RGB. It's a fish tank case, mid tower, but still allows us to have ATX motherboards and 360 millimeter AIO. So it doesn't look that massive. In fact, it isn't massive, but still has nice wood accents on the bottom and is black. There is a white version available as well. Plus, it already comes with three included RGB fans and you can add some more on the bottom. The cool thing is because it's a fish tank, the front panel glass also comes off, which makes the building of this PC very, very simple and easy. I love that. It's very important that you install the power supply cables here before the AIO is mounted on top of the PC case because it's pretty impossible to access all the cables and headers on top of the motherboard after the AIO has been installed. Talking about power supplies, we're using the Thermaltake Tough Power GT 1200 watt fully modular power supply. ATX 3.1. Oh, it's small. This is 80 plus gold efficiency and ATX 3.1 and PCIe 5.1 certified, which means we don't need to worry about our cables melting. This power supply is also on a deal. In fact, a lot of power supplies from Thermaltake are. So if you want to check this one out as well, I'm going to leave the link in the video description below. Then finally, we need to do a bit of cable management just plug in everything in. There are a little bit more cables than usually because all the fans are ARGB, so they have two cables coming from them, but we can daisy chain them together. Then we're plugging in all the cables in the back, setting everything up, and it's time for the first boot. Okay, we are partly done, and there's one major component that's missing, as you can see from there, but it should turn on right now. So that's exactly what I wanna do. So we're gonna do a test boot. And here, everything's turned on. I've got this plugged into the iGPU and let's see if it works. Okay, well, that was fast. As you can see, boot. Uh, first time with the colorful motherboard, but that was fast. I can see our CPU, 265K, 32 gigs of RAM. BIOS version is probably old. It's from 2024. So we're going to update that, install Windows, and then I'll see you in a minute. When it comes to setting up the PC, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is buying a Windows license for $150 or something like that. But here's where the sponsor of this video comes in. And uh, instead of just telling you about the boring details, I made a little sketch that perhaps is a little bit more interesting that you can look at while we're setting up the PC. Ah, uh, it's so annoying. I don't want to pay hundreds of dollars to just change my Windows wallpaper just because my Windows isn't licensed. Well, why don't you try Hookies? That's a ton cheaper. And if you use the code TN20, you get it even cheaper. What do you mean? How do I get it and how is it possible? Well, see this video here or the one you're watching. Click yeah. in the link on the video description, add the Windows 11 CD product to the cart, proceed to checkout, add the code TN20 for the extra discount. So what the Windows 11 Pro OEM key is just $23.22. <laughs> yeah. Choose the preferred payment option and complete the purchase. The key will be available on the purchased orders in a few moments. Copy the key and paste it into your Windows activation settings and you're all done. Well, that was easy. Is that Ryan Gosling? Uh, um, uh, no. Anyway, by the way, the same discount code also works website-wide, so go check out uh, other products, maybe like Microsoft Office.
So, I've been having an absolute nightmare with Amazon shipping. They chose to use the Royal Mail, and for some reason, it's just, they just say, we've tried to deliver, but no one's in. They just don't know how to call the phone and say like, hey, I'm here, where's the parcel? So they've just been taking it back for almost a week now. So because of that, Zotac RTX 5070Ti for now. Maybe for the B-roll, you'll see MSI one, so don't be confused in there, because then it finally arrived. But for now, I'm going to use the Zotac one. By the way, the Zotac one should be on a deal as well. Similar type of deal, maybe perhaps even cheaper. I don't know. You go check it out in the video description below if you want to use that. And the trick here is, it doesn't really matter which 5070Ti you're going for. Any of them will be formed exactly the same. So then, GPU install, probably the simplest part of the PC build. What you have to do is just plug it into the top slot, take off the PCA covers on the side of the PC. But the thing is, this one doesn't have all screw in PCA covers. All I have to do is just move that metal side by side until it comes off, and then I can screw it into the top slot. Then I plug it in the power cables and I was excited for the new boot. But something happened. After multiple tries of restart and figuring out what the heck is going on, I realized that the SSD just wasn't working. I thought maybe the slot has broken somehow with a static maybe zap, put in another Gen 5 SSD and boom, it shows up in BIOS. Look at that. You can see that it's there. That shows up, but on the slot that I've got it in, which is M.25, it shows empty there. So once I decided that we're going to go with the Gen 4 route and go with those SSDs, two of them instead of one of them, everything seemed to be working well. I just got them installed. Okay, one and two terabytes installed. So maybe somehow I fried the SSD because in the studio, I'm often building up quite a bit of static and when I'm touching things, maybe that's what fried it. I have no idea. But as you remember, we already installed Windows and did all the drivers and updates and everything. Now we're gonna have to start all over again. So I left the Windows to update and drivers to update and software to download. And I actually did a live stream in the middle because it just took so long. If you wanna check out the live stream of the best monitor deals, then go check it out on the channel. Then one last thing is to actually zip tie everything nicely in the back so that the cable management is beautiful. Okay, let's put the back panel on and hide all the cable mess or tidiness behind the PC. Personally, I would not put this mesh on the top because the fans are set to exhaust and I'm not worried about like the dust flowing into there because it's just going to be blown out anyway. So I wouldn't put that on the top. And let's take both the glass panels, put them on as well. They just snap in place and voila. Now it's time to do some testing. When the PC is ready, I want to do a few tests to see how good it actually is. You might be asking, how do you test the PC? Well, I'm going to stress the CPU and GPU. They are the main components that produce heat inside there. And I want to see if they can maintain their performance and not actually throttle. Throttling means that when the PC is too hot and the CPU is smart, really, that it has to turn down its power in order to keep it within the factory rated temperatures. So we're going to test that right now. What I have here is Cinebench R23. So if you are a creator, then this is potentially something that you might be doing. So when you're rendering a 3D scene, it's very similar in here. This just tests how good the CPU is. Now, in here, I've got a monitor where I can check all the temperatures and all the sensors inside. And we can see that the PL1 and PL2 limits have been set to 250 watts. Let's take a look. Let's press go and then we'll see. Interesting, what I can see right now is even with the current settings, it's not hitting the 250 watts. Okay, it went 193, what I've seen, on 200 watts maximum there. But for some reason, the CPU thinks that it can keep its clock speeds, what it's rated from factory at even 200 watts, and the core temperatures are 64 degrees, which is very, very cool. Now the fans are making more noise than they should be, so they can be tuned down because the temperatures are so very good in this. Even at full load at 200 watts, 64 degrees, 
is very, very good. So we got a score of 2011 points. If you're wondering if your CPU is actually acting accordingly, one of the nicest things you can do is go on YouTube, Tech Notice Core Ultra 7 Review. So we're seeing that the Core Ultra 7, I got 2,117 points. I've got the Intel Boost Profile installed. So that's maybe why it goes over there. So why don't we take the Intel Boost off and have Intel Extreme on? So this is why you should test your CPU. So you can actually see that what's going on. I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna to go to BIOS. We're gonna take the Boost profile off. Interestingly, this doesn't allow us here to go to the performance and other modes. Now you could um, set the fan curves in there, but I've just put the fan configuration to AIO pump. We're gonna put to full mode. Actually, let's do manual CPU fan. No, we're gonna go to 100% when we're around there. This, and until we hit 70 degrees, we don't really need that. Oh, we need to enable XMP because that is only 4,800. So we're gonna be losing some speed in there. For these tests, it doesn't really matter, but I wanna see if our performance and quietness has actually gone down. Our ambient is about 42 decibels. As you can see, that fan curve made a huge difference. Look at our temperatures, basically the same, still pulling 180 watts, something like that, but the PC is completely quiet, very, very quiet. Now, we're gonna to add to this test because we wanna see how well does it handle heat? We're gonna add a GPU test at the same time. So now our CPU pulls their 170 watts. Our GPU temperature's going up because our GPU is pulling 300 watts. So we're producing a lot of extra heat in there and we're gonna see how well does the CPU handle it if the GPU is quite hot in there. As you can see, the noise has come up a few decibels because the graphics card fans are on, but nothing major. Now let's see the airflow of this. From the sides, not too much in. Look how these side fans are sucking in the air. And you can see how slowly the air comes up from the top here. GPU is full belt now and GPU temperature is roughly around 79 degrees. Interestingly, the GPU temperature is warmer if we don't have a CPU heat on, because when the CPU heat is on, the fans are actually pushing it to exhaust out much better as well. So we get extra exhaust when the CPU temperature is on as well. So look at this now. Look at this space in there now. I'm very happy with the quietness of this PC. It's nice. So, if you want to build a PC, something like this, I'm going to leave everything linked in the video description below. Thank you very much, guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.